Today, we're going to be talking about Hubot, the best GitHub employee. But before we talk about Hubot, let's talk a little bit about GitHub and how we work. There are currently 603 people that work for GitHub, and we are distributed all over the world. 60% of us work remotely from home or in co-working spaces, and 40% of us work from headquarters in San Francisco. We consider ourselves a our remote first company, but what exactly does being remote first mean? Being remote first means you are building your development team around a workflow that embraces the concepts of remote work, whether or not your employees are remote. Because of this, we love asynchronous communication, and we have three primary ways of communicating with each other. Pull requests, which lets you tell others about changes you've pushed to a repository on GitHub. Issues, which are used to track ideas, enhancements, tasks, or bugs for work on GitHub and chat, which we use for normal conversations or non-work chatter. By using these methods of communication, we ensure a few things. Everything is written down, which means that people are kept in the loop no matter what time zone they're in. Everything is searchable, so you can go back and remember what was said. And everything is linkable, so you can share discussions later on if need be. Today, let's talk about chat. Our first chat client was Campfire, which was created by 37signals. But last year, we felt that Campfire wasn't needing our needs anymore. So we moved away from Campfire. Like many other companies, we use Slack as our chat client. And it's worked out pretty well for us so far. The one thing that's been consistent through our evolution of chat clients is... Hubot, our best employee. As you may have noticed, however, Hubot isn't exactly human. He's a chatbot. We open sourced Hubot back in 2011 so that everyone could have a chatbot as well. But you're probably wondering, why did we take the time to create Hubot? Because given the opportunity, we will automate everything possible, and Hubot helps us do that. We call this technique ChatOps, and it has a few primary goals. Everyone sees what's happening, from day one. By placing tools directly in the middle of the conversation, everyone is pairing all of the time. And it's also pretty fun. Let's take a look at some of the things we can do with Hubot. You can say, Hubot sup, and he'll return an image with sup on it. Hubot also has a brain and can remember things. Like a gif of a monkey doing a rim shot. You can also ask Hubot to return pug bomb, which returns a picture of a cute pug. Or you can ask Hubot to pug bomb you 10 times, and he'll return 10 images of pugs. You can say, Hubot, shout out in Ohio and he'll tell you all of the GitHubers that are in Ohio. Hubot also remembers who people are, and the longer you're at GitHub, the more he has to say about you. Hubot can also tell you what the HTTP status code 418 is with cute puppies, and can host a sparkle party. But Hubot also helps us get our job done. He can give a graph of the GitHub API so we can monitor the health. He can help us schedule times to video chat with coworkers around the world, and if something is wrong with GitHub, he can also tell us who is on call so that we can page them. Then, when everything is back to normal, Hubot can tweet to say that everything's okay. He also deploys GitHub.com. And you're all like, really? That's crazy. Really, it's okay. You can be impressed. Now let's talk about how we do it. The flow. Check out a new branch in a Git repository. Like this. Then, write some code in your Git repository, like this. Once you've committed your code and you're all set to go, open up a pull request. Then, you need to get feedback. And once you've gotten the feedback and the approval, you're ready to ship it. We don't merge our code into master until we're sure it's production ready. So let's use Hubot to deploy our code. You can ask Hubot, where can I deploy? and Hubot will give the environments that we can deploy to. We're going to deploy to production today, so then we say, Hubot, deploy GitHub a new feature to production. There's a few important pieces here, so let's break it down step by step. GitHub, the application, which is what we're deploying to. New feature, the branch that we're testing. And production, the environment that we chose. 
So when we put this all together and say Hubot deploy GitHub new feature to production, Hubot will give us feedback and say terabytes deploying GitHub to production. And then once we're sure that it's been deployed to production, Hubot makes sure that we check Haystack to make sure everything's okay. Haystack is our internal tool that lets us see and gather data metrics about what's going on inside the application. Haystack helps us see to make sure we haven't raised any extra errors or something's not broken in production. Once we're sure that everything's good to go, we can go back to our pull request and hit the merge pull request button, and then we're all good to go. So Hubot's pretty impressive. And like I said before, he's open source. You can check out the source code at github.com slash github slash Hubot. And here's the repository. He's also super customizable, and you can check it out at github.com slash Hubot slash scripts. It's an organization. And there's an easy startup. I'm going to walk you through the startup of getting your own Hubot ready to go with a demo. In order to get started, you need to make sure that you have Node.js. You can install Node.js from nodejs.org, and you also need the Node Package Manager. Once you've installed these things, you can go back to your terminal and run npm install g for global, yo for the yeoman generator, and then generator hubot. Now that our dependencies have been installed, let's go ahead and make our hubot. We need to make our directory for our hubot. Let's just say make directory hubot. And then once we've made the directory hubot, we can change the directory so that we're in the hubot directory. Once we're inside the hubot directory, we need to run yo hubot. And that's it. Now hubot, the CLI tool, will ask us a few questions like, who's the owner? What the bot name is? You can't actually name hubot hubot. So for this demonstration, I'm going to call him hubot. And then a description. If you want to change the description, you can, but it's not totally necessary. And then a bot adapter. I recommend you the bot adapter to be Slack. And now we're going to install our dependencies. Let's take a look at what the Yeoman generator set us up with. By using the ls command, we can see that the Yeoman generator set us up with a bunch of basic files to get our Hubot up and ready to go. And in fact, we can start using our Hubot off the bat by going into the bin folder and running bin Hubot, the command. Now that we have our Hubot prompt ready to go, let's run a simple command. We'll just say Hubot ping, and he'll respond with pong. Now if we try another command, we can say Hubot the rules, and Hubot will give us the four rules of a robot. Let's go ahead and exit out of this prompt. Now that we know our Hubot works, let's go ahead and initialize a Git repository. We can do this by running git init, and now that we see, we've initialized an empty Git repository. Now if we run git status, we can see that none of the files have been added. So what we can do is we can run git add with a period, and this will recursively add all the files in our directory. So if we run git status again, we can see that all the files have been added. Once we've done this, we can then run git commit dash m, and we can say initial commit. Now, if we run git log, we can see that I've made one initial commit on our new repository. Now that we've initialized our git repository, let's go ahead and set up the repository on github.com. Go ahead and click on start a project and then enter the name of the repository. Let's go ahead and just call this my Hubot. Make sure to not initialize this repository with a readme, a get ignore, or a license as we already have content. Then go ahead and click on create repository. Now you can see we have our empty initialized repository. So if you look at or an existing repository from the command line, you can see that we have two commands git remote add origin with the github git URL and the command git push dash u origin master, which will push up our local git repository to GitHub. After you've pushed up your code to GitHub, you can see it's all ready to go. 
we have a live Hubot you can hack on today. You can go to the repository at github.com slash mlh slash local hack day Hubot if you'd like to open up a pull request for the script. You can also play with our live Hubot in the Hubot playground room on the MLH Slack channel. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your hack day.